Hey, what's up? It's Matt, and recently I've been reading Things to Make and Do in the Fourth Dimension by Matt Parker, who also happens to have a YouTube channel, which you should check out because it's pretty cool. One of the things this book talks about is base number systems. Now, I know that we have a base 10 number system with the numbers 0 through 9, but I don't really know exactly what that means, and I wouldn't know how to read a different base system or write in a different base system. But this book helped me understand it in a way that made sense, so I just want to share that understanding I now have with you, because I think this stuff is just pretty cool. Alright, let's roll. This entire thing is a number, 3191. Each individual slot is called a digit, and in each digit we write symbols which represent values. Now the thing is that symbols can stay the same, but their value will change depending on the digit they are in. For example, the symbol 1 in the first digit represents the value 1, but the exact same symbol 1 in the third digit represents the value 100. Finally, here is a chart showing all possible combinations of symbols and values for the first four digits of the base 10 number system. If we want to make the number we saw before, we just pick the values we need to add together to get that number, and then write the symbols that represent those values in the right digits. So since we need 3000, we'll use the symbol 3 in the fourth digit. We need the value 100, so we'll take the 1 in the third digit, and of course you see where this is going, we take 9 for the second digit and 1 for the last. 3191. This is pretty obvious to us because we're so used to this process that we don't even have to think about it. But, what does this look like when we're working with non-base 10 bases, not other base systems? One of the things base 10 means is that there are 10 possible symbols per digit, 0 to 9. So if we were writing numbers in base 12, we would need 12 symbols per digit. But how are we supposed to do this? There's only 10. Well, we can use non-numerical symbols like letters. This is actually why I use the term symbols and not numbers, because saying numbers limits our thinking to just actual numbers, which means we can only really think complexly about base 10 or lower systems. Also, it's worth pointing out that the symbols we use are totally arbitrary. There's no real reason why this specific character represents this quantity. As long as we understand the value they represent, it doesn't matter what the actual symbols are. They could be A and B, Z and K, or the Vsauce logo and a star. Actually, let's use that last example to hammer home this point. Alright, so we understand the values of the symbols 0 through 9. What are the values of these extra two? Well, in base 10, the first digit values go from 0 to 9, so in base 12, they go from 0 to 9 to 10 to 11. These are all the possible symbols and values for the first digit of this base 12 system. Okay, so super quick recap, we have a number with four digits, each digit has a certain amount of symbols depending on what base we're in, and those symbols have values that can change depending on what digit they are in. Okay, now remember our chart from before showing all possible combinations of symbols and values for the first four digits of base 10? Here it is for base 12. Nothing new in the first column, this is what we talked about last time. Vsauce is 10, star is 11. But look at the new columns. The values aren't 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100 and 110, they're different. And this is because we're not multiplying them by 10 like we would in a base 10 system, we're multiplying them by 12. Every value in the first digit is found by multiplying the symbol by 1, or 12 to the 0th. Every value in the second digit is found by multiplying the symbol by 12. Every value in the third, symbols by 144, and so on. I actually wrote up a nice little formula for converting symbols to their values for any base system. This formula actually wasn't in the book, it was something I just wrote and figured out myself. And granted, it's very simple and easy, but for someone who doesn't really study math, or hasn't really been great at math for a while, I'm, I'm very proud of this. <laughs> that is assuming it's correct, which I hope it is. If it's not, as always, call me out on my crap. Okay, so now let's finally write out the equivalent of base 10's 3191 in base 12. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Pick the values we need to add together to get that number, and then pick the corresponding symbols. When we do this, our number is 1 star 1 Vsauce logo, or 1728 plus 1584 plus 12 plus 10, or in base 10, 3,191. Alright, pause. I already messed this up. The base 12 number I wrote is 3,324, because uh, I accidentally switched the Vsauce and the star. If you wanted to write 3,191, it would be one Vsauce logo, one star. Not the way I wrote it. I just messed up, and I've already edited, edited it all, and I don't feel like going back, so sorry. Resume. 
Come on, that's pretty cool, right? And also, if you are given a number in any base system, it's really easy to convert it to base 10. Just take the number and multiply each symbol by the base system raised to increasing powers. You can do this with any base system as long as you replace the base you're multiplying with. Once you know how to understand these non-base 10 number systems, you'll start to see them everywhere. And there are two places that I see them the most. The first is in hexadecimal color codes, which is a base 16 system representing different color values. And I'm actually making a video on it next week to go into the topic further, but for now, just stay tuned. And the second place that I see these the most, and that probably everyone sees non-base 10 systems the most, is binary, base 2. Binary is really easy because every single digit only has two possible symbols, 0 and 1. The symbol 0 is always the value 0, and the 1 represents the value 2 raised to increasing powers. So now all we do is multiply them out and add the values together, and we see that this binary number is the base 10 number 99. Binary is also a pretty easy and fun way to communicate messages. Tom Scott has an entire video talking about how to convert binary numbers into letters. The first three symbols say whether or not the letter is capitalized, lowercase, a punctuation mark, or something different. And the last five add up to the numbers 1 through 26, which you then swap out for the English alphabet equivalent. But seriously, go check out the video, it's very cool, very informative. Matt Parker's book also talks about how you can represent binary with your fingers, where a down finger is 0 and an up finger is 1. You can spell out entire words this way, or if you bring in your other hand, you can make an numbers up to 1023. Also, Matt Parker likes to mention how if you use both of your hands, then 132 is the most aggressive number in binary you could make. I'll let you figure out why. Alright, I know this was kind of long, but I just wanted to explain this. I felt like reading this book really helped me understand it, and I realized there was so much I didn't know and so many fun, different, and weird ways you can express numbers. So I wanted to share this with you, and that's what I did. Check out everything I mentioned, Matt's book, Matt's YouTube channel, Tom's video, and that video I'm gonna put out soon on understanding hexadecimal color codes. All right, cool, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.